Today I am going to give you an insight about blueberries and their flavors. Blueberries has become one of the largest small fruit commodities in the US. In the southeastern US, it is an integral part of the economies and culture of the local people. In 2017, the total value of utilized production of cultivated blueberries was 822 million US dollars, which also ranked fifth among non citrus fruits in the US. The recent increase in the production of blueberries is due to the high demands by consumers. In fruit crops, consumers are more interested in fruit quality. Flavor is one of the important fruit quality traits that consumers look out for. Flavor in fruits are known to be synthesized by various volatile compounds. So if there is a cultivar that consumers tend to prefer with regards to its flavor, then we can run an experiment to determine the volatile compounds responsible for that flavor. By doing this, a breeder can use the results of this experiment to find the biochemical pathway of the volatile compound and use it to improve on other berries. So we need to survey the germplasms to understand the variations present and what volatiles to target during fruit breeding. So our goal today is to illustrate how volatile compounds in blueberries are sampled using gas chromatography coupled with mass spectrometry detector. The entire process of identifying volatile compounds starts right after harvest. These are some of the materials that will be needed for sorting and weighing of berries. The fruits are sorted for absence of surface defects and uniform blue coloration. This is to prevent underripe and overripe berries so that we are able to sample for the optimal flavor volatile. The protective clothing used also prevents cross-contamination from the analyst who might have used some form of shampoo, deodorant or perfume before coming to start the work. We do three replications. This is to capture the variation in the sample since they do not all ripen at the same time. These are then kept in the freezer until processing so as to maintain the flavor profile. To prepare the sample in a way for us to be able to analyze for volatiles, we blend them to get a puree. 2 grams of the puree is transferred into a 20 ml glass vial and 10 microliter internal standard is added. The sample is then tightly capped and arranged on a GC tray for analysis. There are three different steps that goes on in the GC, which I would like us to understand the principle behind them. This step is done with a solid phase micro extraction device, also known as SPME. An auto sampler will carry our sample into an agitator, which serves as an incubator. In this agitator, the sample is kept for them to establish a thermodynamic equilibrium. The agitation process helps our volatile compounds to evaporate from the sample. The SPME device has a silica fiber at the tip, which is inserted into the sample, which is still in the agitator. It is the fiber that collects the volatile compound. So as the agitation process continues, it helps the volatile compounds in the sample to get concentrated around the vicinity of the fiber. During the second step, the fiber which has now collected all the volatile compounds are then inserted into an inlet where all the volatiles are released from the fiber onto a GC column. The final step deals with the separation of volatile profiles, which takes place in the GC column. You are able to see the separation process on your computer as different peaks coming out at different times. Each peak in the chromatogram relates to a particular volatile compound. Also, the higher or larger the peak, the higher the concentration of that volatile compound in the blueberry sample. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon.